today we are going to be talking about home equity lines of credit. Now, before I begin, I'll give everybody a chance to kind of jump in. So there may be some people who want to attend. I'll talk to you about uh, who we are first off, Auxilium Mortgage. You might have heard of us, you might not have heard of us. We are based out of Victoria, BC, and we have been in business here since uh, 2011. That's about right. And uh, since that time, we have done over 800, and I think it's the last number is about $830 million worth of mortgages and over 2,000 funded mortgages and hundreds of online reviews. And I'm proud to say they're all pretty much all five-star reviews. Um, so how do we get that goal? How do we achieve that kind of service level? Well, we have a team here. Our concept's a little different. It's not just me, Cam, the one broker doing it all by himself. We've got a team of individuals. We've got brokers. We've got admin staff. We've got, uh, you know, everybody taking up a function to make sure that you as the client are totally looked after. Anyway, it's noon, so let's begin. We're going to talk about home equity lines of credit, also known as HELOCs. Uh, that's another terminology for them. First thing I'll clarify for people, and there's always a little confusion, a home equity line of credit is essentially a mortgage. That's right. When I talk to people sometimes, I say, well, do you have a mortgage on their property? And they go, no, I don't have one of those, oh, but I got a line of credit. That's the same thing. It's just registered as another charge on title. Typically what'll happen is you can get home equity lines of credit as a standalone product, which means that you can have that as the only mortgage on your property. And in Canada, by regulation, by law, that's capped out at 65% of the value of your property. What does that mean? Let's say your house is worth a million dollars and you want to get a line of credit. Provided, of course, you qualify income-wise, you could get a mortgage up to, or a home equity line of credit, same thing, up to $650,000. That would be the maximum. Now, you can exceed that, but here's how that part of it works. Between the home equity line of credit and the traditional mortgage, whether it be a uh, variable or a fixed, you can go up to 80% of the value of the property. So using that same example, once again, let's say our home's worth a million dollars, you could have a line of credit for up to 650,000 and an additional mortgage for another 150,000 more beyond that, provided of course you qualify. That's it. That's how that part of it works. Now, what's unique about lines of credit? Well, the number one thing that is, uh, I would say most unique about them is you have the option of paying just interest only. You're not required to pay any principal off so long as you're below your global limit and you haven't exceeded it. You can continue to make interest payments as long as you want to make them. Of course, there's a downside to that because bottom line is if you're just paying interest consistently, you're obviously paying a lot of interest over time. Currently, uh, lines of credit are priced at prime plus a half. That's pretty normal. Sometimes you get a lender who'll do prime plus a quarter, and sometimes it can even be higher depending on your situation and your institution. So as an example, right now, the prime rate, because it hasn't changed, is 7.2%. That's what the Bank of Canada, like uh, with the RBC, like, so if you walked in RBC, CIBC, you're going to all see their prime rate at 7.2%. Now, typically, let's say they add that half a percent on, your rate is effectively then 7.7%. What does that mean? It means that for every $100,000 you borrow, you will pay approximately $7,700 in interest per year. That's provided that the prime rate doesn't change. And that's roughly about what? A little over $600 a month for every $100,000. So that's roughly what it costs. Now compare that rate to mortgages. Uh, variables, you can get variables, some of them in the range of about 6.2%. And fixed rate mortgages, well, if for conventional mortgages, you're looking at somewhere just over 5%. So lines of credit do cost more. But the reason they cost more is because of their flexibility and the fact that you can re-advance. All that simply means is let's say your limit was 100,000 and let's say your max, you pay it down to 50,000. Well, you can re-advance that 50,000 again without having to qualify. That's right, you don't have to ask the bank to borrow that money again. It's part of your limit, so you can do with it as you please. The other advantage of lines of credit is that if you pay them out, there's no penalty to do so. With a traditional mortgage, let's say a fixed mortgage, the penalty can be their three months interest or what they call interest rate differential. With a variable, typically the penalty is three months interest, but with a line of credit, there is no penalty. But again, remember, that comes at a premium. That rate is considerably higher than traditional rates, and you're going to be paying for that privilege. But if you need that flexibility, it's really good. 
in the, uh, I would say in the old days before rates went crazy, uh, people used to use what's called a Smith maneuver. So what they would do is they would take a line of credit against their house. They would then use those funds and buy an investment of some sort. Let's say it's a stock or whatever it may be. Now they were able to write off the interest cost for the investment. So essentially they were able to leverage the equity in their home and use it for investing and be able to write the interest off. A great idea, but given where rates are today, your investment would have to get a very significant high rate of return to make it sensible. And of course, you've always got the downside because if your investment tanks, you're still stuck with the line of credit. And that can certainly be significant. Now, the other thing to bear in mind with the uh, lines of credit is, is that the bank does have the privilege or the right or whatever you want to look at it as calling it. Uh, they can, unlike a traditional mortgage, if suddenly they say, look, you know what, you're a fully advanced and we've seen property values drop. We effectively want to reduce your limit. We want you to pay it down. They have the power to do so. So you should really be clear when you get a line of credit with the institution you're with, what kind of the rules are. When things are great, everybody's happy, but when things can go south, that's the time you wanna make sure that you're fully understand the product that you're in. Now, what do people use lines of credit for? Like I said, they can use it for investing. You may use it for a short term. You may be needing to, let's say, do some repairs around the house and you don't wanna be locked in for longer. You wanna have the flexibility of repayment. They're handy for that. Uh, let's say you're a seasonal worker and your income really fluctuates. Well, you may want a line of credit because then you can make interest only payments when it's convenient and then start paying down the principal when you've got more of a means to do so. So again, very, very flexible. Now, the lines of credit, depending on the institution, are available on your principal residence. Some lenders are okay with it being on a rental property as well. And again, it's case by case, lender by lender. Uh, the other thing you have to bear in mind is that you're also going to have to qualify using the stress test for the line of credit. Now, for those of you not familiar with the stress test, it's pretty simple. It's been around a few years now. It's either the Bank of Canada rate, which currently is, I think, still five and a quarter, or the contract rate plus two. So for all of you that are trying to get a line of credit, let's look at it this way. The rate right now, the prime rate, let's say at TD is 7.2%. They're going to add half a percent, 7.7, .7, and now they're going to add 2% more. So effectively, you're qualifying at 9.7%, which is very tough. You're going to have to have a significant income to be able to get that line of credit. So that's why sometimes lines of credit are harder to qualify than traditional products. Uh, the other thing that you might want to do it, like I said, is it can combine with a mortgage. Uh, that's certainly there. Um, typically, again, if we look at the pros and cons of it, like I said, pros are flexibility, pay it out anytime, make interest only payments. The really, the only downside is that you could potentially be paying interest for decades. If you're not uh, disciplined, you don't pay off the uh, principal, you're gonna be stuck, no doubt with lower payments, but you're gonna be effectively paying interest for a really long time. Now for some of you, that may make sense, for others of you, no. Uh, the other thing that uh, you can use a line of credit for, like I said, is to help offset a, let's say, a tough situation. We all know currently with inflation that things are very expensive. If you've got lots of room on your line of credit, you could effectively use it to make those mortgage payments. Effectively eliminate a mortgage payment for now. You're not really completely eliminating it, but at least you're not having to make it. You will have to at a future date, but if it helps you in the short term, that's a good way to go as well. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Most of the financial institutions, actually all of this main big banks all offer, the credit unions have them as well. As brokers, we've got access to monoline lenders. Some monoline lenders offer lines of credits while others don't. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I think we've summed up all of that sort of thing uh, with respect to a line of credit. If you think it's the right thing for you or it's something that you effectively have been contemplating, give us a shout at the Auxilium team. We'll take a look at your individual situation and then we can gauge whether a HELOC line of credit is effectively the right product for you or not. Again, like I said, it's very unique and qualifying for it isn't going to be easy. But again, if you've got, let's say, a mortgage-free house, you've got all this equity not doing anything for you, maybe you're thinking of buying a rental property or doing something else, it may make sense to tap into that equity. But you'll only know once we've had a discussion and we can uh, see if it's the right fit. I hope you've enjoyed this Facebook Live. I mean, it's been, you know, we try to keep these things short and sweet, informative. 
by all means, if you're watching this at a later date, have you got questions or anything else, don't hesitate, send them our way. We'd be happy to help you out. Auxilium simply means to carry aid assistance support. We do that here day in and day out. We look forward to doing it all through 2024. See you next time.